What's up guys, Silver here with another Halo Master Chief Collection Achievement Guide. This time we're doing part 9, the final installment of our Halo 3 lasso run. Start this up, this is going to be a quick and easy one. We're going to start off by turning around, there's a bunch of dropped weapons behind our crashed pelican, so we're going to grab a battle rifle. You'll actually carry over all your weapons and grenades from the previous mission, Cortana, so switch out either of those weapons for a BR. There should be four behind the pelican, so grab one at least. You only really need to grab one, but fill up on all the ammo if you want to. Uh, we're just going to use it to shoot Johnson a couple times in the head to take his Spartan laser and have infinite ammo, thereby making the first part of this mission a breeze. But first we have to get up there with him because he's supposed to be unreachable, but we're going to get up there anyway. Typically this trick is done with a frag grenade jump, so you're going to throw a frag down, jump as it goes off, and it will propel you higher than your normal jump up onto the pyramid so you can kind of get a head start on that thing. And then people typically do another grenade jump, but I found doing a slide jump is much easier and you don't take any damage. So much faster and a lot better, especially with the black ice skull on, so you don't have to recharge your shields after you do the trick. But I'm going to show you two different ways to get on top of the pyramid for the first jump. One is going to be the frag grenade, the typical one that most people have seen probably before. And the next one will be a fuel rod jump, which is actually a lot better. So here we go for the first strategy, the frag jump. We're going to go and kill this hammer-wielding brute flood form. Right off the bat, we're going to steal his hammer. We don't need the hammer, but I just like to have it so I can smack things to get my shield back more easily. We're going to go over to the left side of the pyramid over here, and we're basically just trying to run around all of these flood and ignore them. Hopefully, they'll ignore us. If they do start shooting at you, you'll probably want to go grab some shields, so you're going to have to fight them to get your shield all the way up so you can do this frag jump over here in the snow. But throw a frag down right about here. Jump as it goes off. It will propel you up onto the pyramid, and you could walk up this little incline up to the first level of the pyramid here. Wait for some flood forms to jump at you so you could smack them to get your your shield back up, jump on the railing, turn towards the middle of the pyramid, and we're going to run, jump, and land as far down on this incline as we can at a diagonal towards the spine of the pyramid. And right as you land, you want to hit jump to carry that momentum forward. You get a boost, and you want to crouch as you bounce back up in order to land on the spine. Now I'm going to cut to a different run to show you how to get up on the pyramid with a fuel rod instead of a frag, and I'll also show that slide jump again. So here we are back at the beginning of this first encounter where the hammer guy comes down. We're just going to run right past him, and you can see in the distance, in the middle of this snowy field, there's actually a fuel rod gun sitting up on this little snowy mound I guess is a good way to describe it but we'll just take that we'll run to the place where we did the frag grenade jump and this I think is easier and also it doesn't take down your shields nearly as much but all you do is you just look down at the ground run jump and then shoot at the ground so the explosion on the ground propels you upwards higher than you would be able to reach normally you get on the pyramid and then we do the slide jump which I'll actually slow down here in case you are not familiar with a slide jump this works on any slanted surface in the game all you want to do is run diagonally towards the spine of the pyramid, jump as far down the slanted surface as you can to maximize your falling speed, jump right when you land to transfer that falling momentum into forward momentum, and then crouch as you approach the spine to land. The higher you fall from, the more momentum you'll build, so you could use the railing to get a little more height, which I did in the first example I showed, but not this one. You could also get even more momentum by crouching and then uncrouching right before you jump off the slanted surface, but that's a little more advanced, not necessary for this trick in particular. You could also simply grenade jump, hammer jump or fuel rod jump to the top of this spine as well but the slide jump is super easy super quick you don't need any equipment also you may not actually have frag grenades when you start this mission because whatever you have for grenades after the cortana mission that's what you carry over so if you have no frags at the end of that mission you won't have any to start here so the fuel rod jump may be your only option for the first jump but the good news is that's a much better jump i think it's easier and you also don't lose nearly as much shield but once you're on the spine follow the path i took to get to johnson over here with the spartan laser you want to shoot him in the head with the battle rifle which will kill him momentarily and you want to make sure his laser falls off the map if it doesn't fall off like it did here you want to juggle it so it does fall off so you want to throw it off the map real quick if it doesn't fall off on its own he'll respawn with a different laser you want to kill him and pick that one up immediately you can see i kind of stood right over him as he died so that laser didn't have a chance to fall off the cliff so i just grabbed it right as i shot him and the second laser is the one that has infinite ammo if you grab that first laser that we let fall off the cliff that actually does not have infinite ammo, so that'll run out after a few shots. But this one, we could keep firing all day. We could just stay all the way back here from the safety of this cliff. They could still shoot at you, especially those ranged forms, those spiky ones that kind of set up and just kind of act like a flood turret. Those guys could still shoot at you from this distance, and really any of them can, but those are the biggest culprits. And also there's a combat form that spawns with a fuel rod towards the end, and he has taken me out once or twice. So watch out for him. It's easy to get tunnel vision when you're taking those guys out with a laser seemingly invincibly over on the side there, but from time to time they will notice you, so just back up whenever that happens. Duck down and you'll be fine. But you can see I skipped ahead a few minutes here to the point where there's no more flood on top of the pyramid. All you're really doing is just lasering over and over again until there's nothing left. 
pretty simple and at that point we're going to go over here on top of the pyramid here and we're going to find any weapon that we don't already have we just want to use any old weapon to juggle our spartan laser up to the next section so we could use it for the rest of the mission because any weapons that you actually have on you when you activate the cutscene those are all just taken away after the cutscene and you spawn with an assault rifle and that's it but if we place the spartan laser right outside the door where the cutscene activates we could actually grab that after the cutscene and we'll have it again so i sped that part up because i was just juggling all the way to the cutscene area and obviously there's the grave mine segment where he kind of slows you down again and i'm being a little overly particular here anywhere in this general area should be fine but i just felt like i wanted to get it closer to the door for whatever reason just make sure that you don't accidentally activate the cutscene with the spartan laser in your hands because then it will despawn obviously and you'll just be left with that assault rifle so throw the spartan laser down activate the cutscene by going to the door 343 guilty spark will get angry and start blasting his laser eye at you and you can't really do anything at all except for dodge the laser blasts that are coming your way until johnson gets back up and shoots guilty spark in the booty temporarily getting him out of your face and then you could go grab the laser from him laser guilty spark three times and he will blow up a pretty easy boss battle, and dodging the laser blast is pretty easy too. All you have to do is stand still, and he'll shoot to the left or the right of you, and whichever side he shoots to, just kind of move a couple steps to the other direction. So, not bad at all. Now that we have the laser, we could start in on this guy. He's going to fly to the center and basically just stay there, so he's really easy to hit. You don't really have to move that much, and he won't either. The only time you're really going to move is if he fires to your left, just move to your right. If he fires to your right, move to the left. So, not the most intense of boss battles or challenging really at all, but we'll take it. We've had our challenges throughout the lasso run. This is fine. A nice and easy one to uh, finish out on. So, we killed him. We'll activate the cutscene. We'll skip the cutscene, and we will spawn in with only an assault rifle. And I started looking around down at the ground so I could pick up the Spartan laser, and I started freaking out thinking it despawned. I actually happened to spawn right on top of it, so I automatically picked it up. Because since I only have one weapon, the assault rifle, it automatically picks up whatever weapon I happen to touch first. So I have a Spartan laser and an assault rifle now. We're going to start in on these infection forms and three elite combat forms around the corner here. And by start in on them, I mean just let the Arbiter do most of the work. You could just kind of hang back and let the Arbiter take all the hits and do most of the damage you could sit back with your laser and offer assistance from afar but we don't want to take any extra damage that we don't need to even though you start off the guilty spark fight with no shield and it stays down because of the black eye skull throughout that whole fight when you spawn in again after that fight after the cutscene you actually spawn in with a full shield so you don't have to worry about going and smacking one of the elite combat forms just hang back preserve that fresh new shield and once those three guys are dead we'll move forward i like to grab one of their plasma rifles so i have a plasma rifle and the laser now and I like to move up to this door, but then kind of stop a little bit and then move backwards because those sentinels are actually pretty quick to kill you. So you can see they kind of turn to look at me. I'll let the Arbiter distract them and then I'll move forward. And another thing you want to take note of is if you deployed any of those auto turrets. You probably didn't because you were on top of the ledge with the infinite laser the whole time during that big battle on the pyramid. But if you just happen to just randomly pick one up and then throw it down, those actually turn against you. So you want to make sure you destroy those, ideally before they turn against you. So before we went in and fought Guilty Spark, we should have killed them. But if you did happen to deploy one or two of them, just destroy them now from afar with the laser. And you can see I sped this part up as well. This is pretty much the opposite of what we were doing when we were last near the top of the pyramid. Instead of shooting from the ledge to the top of the pyramid, now we're shooting from the top of the pyramid to the enemies on the ledge. So clear out the whole ledge of all the enemies before moving up on top. Now that the area is clear, we'll climb up here and follow the Arbiter. He's already kind of uh, fed up with us. He's wondering why we're waiting around on the pyramid. He's ready to go. He's ready to ride in that Warthog. But we have a few more enemies to kill before we get to the Warthog. We have some Sentinels that are fighting Flood in here, so just kind of hang back. Let them kind of duke it out. The Arbiter will jump into the mix as well and distract everybody. You could just kind of hang back and take these guys by surprise. Because again, we want to preserve our shield. There's not really a great place to get your shield back once we start the Warthog run. So ideally, we want to get into that Warthog with a full shield. So just be cautious in this segment. There's no real reason to rush it. We're almost at the end, and then we get that fun Warthog run. This is basically the last room where you could get your shield back by smacking one of these combat forms so just keep that in mind because the next room is going to have carrier forms and then there's just a bunch of infection forms before we get to the hog so plan accordingly but you can see i'm kind of in this hallway still not quite in the room and i could see over this half wall type thing that goes along the side of the hallway here and you could shoot right over it and they don't really shoot up above it so they kind of shoot directly into it and don't really get a good shot at you so you can see they were shooting that half wall and i was shooting over it so that's a good spot to be we are going to have to reposition ourselves so we can kill the guys at the end of this area and you can see right here i'm using the geometry on the left side kind of that slanted wall that comes down to meet that vertical piece down towards the bottom you could peek around the corner and see half of their body and you could shoot that 
Meanwhile, they can't return fire because they carry their guns in their right hands, which are currently obscured by the geometry. So when you were shooting them in their left side, they couldn't return fire because they were carrying their guns in their right hands, which was blocked by the geometry. But we moved on to the carrier forms. You can see we lined all of them up and took them out with one shot for the killtacular, so we just need to mop up all of these infection forms. You could run past them if you want but I like to just make it extra safe and uh, mop most of them up at least. You can see there's some stragglers that are making life difficult, so we'll just run past these guys. They're fairly easy to dodge if there's only a few of them, but if there's a giant pack of them, that's when they get dangerous. And speaking of a giant pack of infection forms, there's about to be a giant pack of infection forms up ahead here. The last enemies we really need to worry about standing between us and the Warthog. I like to just try to laser them, which is tough because you're kind of at the, uh, the decline here. There's a ramp all the way leading up to them, so you got to jump and time it perfectly which I did not do, so I'm just going to mop him up with the plasma rifle, and then we'll head to the Warthog. And now all that stands between us and finishing this game on Lasso is a, I guess, a long series of enemies with a collapsing infrastructure, a collapsing world really around us, so we'll do our best, I guess. I thought it was a really nice touch that when you get in the Warthog here, the Arbiter just kind of deactivates his camouflage and then reveals himself and acts like he was in the Warthog the whole time, even though he was really far away from us and just literally warped to our position, but I thought that was a cool way to handle him spawning and warping to you, which happened throughout this whole game, but I thought it was super noticeable and awesome in this Warthog run when I first played through it. But anyway, back to the run, you can see this is how I handle the first part. I just wait for the explosion on the left and then cut in because there's an explosion on the right side, so I kind of just thread the needle there, and then I move up to this first hub type area, and then we go around to the right, Nothing to this part really, there's a bunch of infection forms which were affectionately referred to as turkeys in some of the behind the scenes footage, which I now think about every single time I go through that part. Once we're able to jump off of this section, I like to do so as soon as possible, so instead of going more towards the left, I like to cut into the right pretty much as soon as you can, go off this ramp, I like to land directly to the left of that pillar right there. And by taking that route and going off that ramp at that point, you have more control than you would normally, just because you're kind of taking it straight on instead of kind of taking it at an angle. So however you want to do that, just make sure you're taking it straight on so you don't flip around or risk turning over. For this tunnel section, I like to go straight down the middle to start because you can see on the left side, there is a severe ramp that will really launch you up, which you don't want. And on the right side, there's a wall. So we got to pick the left or the middle. I pick the middle. And then at this point, I like to cut in towards the left. There's going to be a big jump here on this side and also down the middle. So you kind of just have to pick which one you want to do. Normally, this jump is fine, but I actually end up flipping end over end here. So I'm going to have to bail out or get kicked out, really. It's not my choice. And then I have to flip it over, but that's okay. We're in a safe spot. You want to make sure if you do fall out like this that you get in as soon as possible because eventually... Uh, given enough time, the whole structure underneath you will fall away and you will die. So you'll have to start back at your last checkpoint. And for this section, you want to avoid all those carrier forms. You could splatter whoever you want as long as they're not a carrier form because those guys explode and they'll just flip you over and send you flying who knows where. So just avoid those guys and we'll be able to move on to this next section. Take this jump straight on. You don't want to go at an angle because, again, you will be more likely to flip around and not be able to control your landing. I ended up flipping around anyway, but that's because the Sentinels decided to start shooting me when I was in the air, and they actually carry a lot of momentum. Uh, for some reason, those Sentinel beams and most shots, really, in Halo 3 actually carry a lot of momentum behind them, so they will flip you over if you're airborne. So you want to minimize the amount of time you're airborne. You want to try to minimize jumps when you're around these Sentinels, because if you're in the air, they will just flip you over if they start shooting you. But we're going to go over this jump right here, and then we're going to turn to the right, and some jumps you just have to go over, so you got to risk it, but you want to try to minimize them as much as possible. We're going to go over this jump over here. we got some more Sentinels down below at the bottom of this jump here, but they're not really going to do anything. They're kind of too far away for them to be a major factor, so the Arbiter's going to shoot at them, but we're really just going to turn to the left, go over this jump, and however you go over this jump, as long as you got enough speed, it's totally fine because there's nothing uh, really dangerous over here. you got a nice big landing pad over here. It will wrap up around, follow this uh, red brick road, red triangular brick road. You want to go into this section with a lot of momentum because these guys, I told you before that the projectiles in Halo 3 really carry a lot of force behind them for whatever reason. So these guys could actually stop you and push you backwards if you're not going fast enough. I actually go off this ramp over here and I don't advise this because there's a bunch of sentinels here. And again, they could flip you over if you're airborne. It's a lot safer to just go towards the left and avoid that ramp altogether. And you actually want to take the left uh, side here. You can see I'm in the middle right now. It's better to be on the left side. So just kind of avoid that ramp that I took. Go towards the left. And that way you could avoid this big jump here. You can see I take it slow and awkwardly kind of crawl over it. That's a little tough if you're not used to doing that. But uh, you could obviously just avoid that by staying on the left side to start. And then you could cut into the middle. You do want to be in the middle after that big ramp that would have launched me high into the air that I took slowly. At that point you want to cut into the right 
and go down the middle right here. And it's smooth sailing here for a little bit. We have a big wide road we could drive on here. And we got a bunch of big jumps here, no matter which way you take it. So we're going to go down the middle. And you can see there's a big giant piece of whatever that just fell down and collapsed uh, some of the floor to the far left here. We're going to cut into the right, though. We're not worried about that. You can see there's a bunch of sentinels, so try to minimize your jumps like I mentioned. I do a little bit of needle threading right here. There's the hole on the left and a hole that is created on the right side, so just kind of cut in the middle there. And then I like to go along the left side of this pillar again. If there's a pillar, apparently I want to go on the left side of it. You could go on the right side, but I think the left is a little better. At this point, we want to slow down. We have this ramp right here we're going to go over, and we don't want to launch ourselves too far. So you can see I slowed down a little bit there. There's two big gaps on the left side. We want to wrap up around those two gaps, and then we take the high road. There's two roads you can go down. There's this higher area, and there's a lower area. The lower area is more risky, and it actually takes longer. This higher area is a better route speed-wise, and also is just safer and easier. So we're going to go up here, and then turn to the left. As we get to the top of this hill, and then start going down, basically the whole middle area is going to blow up and not be there in a second. So we want to go towards the left. Not all the way to the left, because you can see there's some explosions over there as well, but mostly towards the left side. So we avoid that huge gap in the middle. We're going to keep moving forward. Turn to the left, and there she is, forward unto dawn. Just go off that big ramp, launch yourself into the bottom of the ship where the hangar is, activate the cutscene, and you will have completed Halo 3 Lasso. But don't celebrate yet, you gotta watch some cutscenes, you gotta get through epilogue, and I'm not gonna put out a guide for that, so you're gonna have to do that one on your own. But that's it for this one, guys. Halo 3 Lasso in the books, the revised guides. And in keeping with the pattern I've set whenever ODST and Halo 4 come to PC on the MCC, I will be releasing new guides for those as well, because the old ones just ain't cutting it. Maybe they cut it, but we could cut it better. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon for some more Halo videos and enjoy those cutscenes. You've earned them. Thanks for watching, guys. If you found that video helpful, be sure to click on the Scorpion icon to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. You can also check out some related guides by clicking on the videos on screen, and you can find links in the description for other social media links of mine. Stay tuned for more Halo guides, and I'll see you in the next one.